Hi everyone. Today we have a 1980 Porsche 928S. This is a Eurospec car making roughly 296 horsepower. This appears to be a gray market vehicle as it doesn't have the traditional VIN and it looks like it came straight out of Europe. You can see the European marker lights on the side as well as on the back it has its single fog light. So a little backstory: I came across a parts car. The parts car was tempting as it had a manual transmission and the whole drivetrain to swap my automatic. So I ended up contacting the guy and I purchased that parts car. When I showed up we got to talking and he needed help with his car, this brown Eurospec. I showed him some of the videos and he liked what he saw and asked me to take a look at this vehicle. I was told it had some electrical issues, hence why there's a wire hanging right here. Upon further inspection, there's a lot more going on with this vehicle. So I'm going to give you a tour, see what's up here. I'm actually going to ask my audience for help. There's a couple things I'm not familiar with on the Eurospec. If someone's able to identify some of this stuff, that would really help me in getting this thing back on the road. So stay tuned, we're going to do a walk around in the car, see what's up, see what needs to be fixed, and then from here on out, I'm going to try to do a series on getting this vehicle running. Let's get started, see what we can find. Under the hood of this 1980 Porsche 928S Eurospec, I'm finding some interesting stuff. A lot of the emission stuff is completely different from my 84 US model, that's to be expected. But I'm actually noticing some odd parts that I'm not able to identify. We have an additional filter here. It looks to be connected to the oil supply. It drains back into the oil fill. And then it runs to two sensors in line here. I believe these are oil pressure sensors as they have wires that go all the way back through the firewall. Here's another look of this oil system. It seems like we have additional inline filters for filtering both the oil of the engine as well as for the transmission. I'll show you that in a second. Someone in the past has painted this intake. There's actually paint along here as well as all scattered around here. As well as when I looked down in here I found some tools including a socket as well as a wrench on that side. Right up front here by the AC condenser we have a tie going through the radiator and the condenser. Looks like there might be an additional cooler on the back side as well as this wiring has been spliced together. If we look in front of the radiator fan and behind the radiator, there looks to be an additional oil cooler jammed in there. I don't think that's uh, sitting correctly and it might even be binding up the fan. I'm going to guess that's a transmission cooler, but I won't know for sure until I lift the car up. All in all, this engine bay appears to be very complete. All the hoses seem to be intact. I found only one rubber hose that was actually cracked that we'll need to replace. Additionally, I did notice that all the fasteners have been taken off on the front fenders, indicating at some point the whole front end was off. And it also looks like it's been resprayed at one point or another. Let's get it lifted up and see what's underneath. Right up front here, we see an additional filter. It looks like a hydraulic filter is what's written on it. Now those hoses seem to go every which way. If I had to guess, that's probably for the transmission cooler. What I do really like about this car is that it has the trim pieces still intact. Let's get under the car and see what's up. First impressions are pretty good. I see that there's a dent right here. That's not too bad. My Porsche actually had driven over something to the point that it probably tweaked the chassis a little bit and took out the AC condenser. So all in all, I'd say this one's in better shape than mine. Moving over here, we have a lot of wires everywhere. Most of this stuff seems to be running to the alternator. Some of those additional cooler hoses are routed around. Now this is interesting. There's actually a shock damper right here. Probably uh, some form of an active dampening motor mount. There's actually one on both sides here as well. There's another twist cap right here. Someone was definitely messing around with this alternator. It may be difficult to see from this angle. The oil pressure sensor is here and above it are some of those oil lines that we mentioned above. These probably route up top to those uh, filters that we talked about, confirming my suspicion that something is run in line with the oil system. 
on the passenger side you can easily see that dampener again that's very interesting to me because i didn't see that on my us spec looks like we have some additional wires going to the starter solenoid this right here is the wire that has been taped up front i'm really eager to know the story behind that and why someone decided to do so we also have braided brake lines up front here Somebody went through the trouble to swap all that out. Overall, I wouldn't say this front end looks too bad. Engine seems to be all put together. I'm just concerned about those additional wires. It doesn't even seem to leak that much either, which is promising. In the middle here, we have our European specific exhaust. This is all different from mine. Mine had a ginormous catalytic converter in the middle. I do appreciate that the frame rails are actually straight. It looks like someone took extra care not to jack it up right here. However, this side looks a little bit rougher. Moving toward the back here, nothing seems to be out of the ordinary. I do think that the transmission is slightly different than my automatic. I don't see the same reservoir. The bell housing also looks to be different, so it might be like a three speed as opposed to my four speed. Upon further inspection, it does appear that this has a fillable reservoir right here. We also have a big dent in the pan. That's a little concerning. We also have some different linkage here. I'm also seeing a band clamp and lots of extra welds here. I assume that this exhaust has been pieced together. I wouldn't say there's anything too odd on this end. We do have those stainless steel brake lines again. That's a nice upgrade. Here's a look at the passenger rear corner. This looks to be in decent shape as well. I'm surprised that I'm not seeing ripped boots on the CV axles. Mine were tore up pretty bad. Also seeing another stainless steel brake line. I'm really impressed by that. The rear coilovers are threaded. There's just a lot of grease and junk right here, so it doesn't look like it. On the back side, you can actually see that the rear fender has been pushed in a little bit, creating an odd look. It looks like the fuel pump and fuel filter have also been removed and are hanging. I see some extra wires here, which is kind of concerning. And even a loose clamp. That pretty much sums up uh, what I'm seeing back here. It doesn't seem too altered, and honestly, this thing's in pretty good shape. The paint is pretty faded towards the rear of the vehicle. This plastic bumper is pretty much gone. What I find interesting is there's no wiper motor or even hole in the carpet here. Yet this vehicle has a linkage right here for the wipers up here. This leads me to believe that the rear might have been swapped out for a different glass panel. What is pretty cool is it's got the uh, factory visors in the back here. Mine did not come with that. It's a bit of a mess back here, but somebody went ahead and put shag carpeting back here. Down here we have actually a new, brand new battery. However, the ground cable seems to be pretty beat up. I'm going to have to put that on before I start doing my diagnostics. This spoiler does appear to be in fantastic shape. I don't see any additional holes popped in the back for any aftermarket units. That's a much better example in comparison to mine. See some more overspray here. I did see some paint runs up front. This roof looks to be in decent shape. A little rust, nothing major. Overall, there's not too much rust on this car to begin with. And that sunroof actually seals properly. Let's take a look on the inside. We have a green emblem down here. I immediately noticed that the dash is actually stitched. These older models used to have that. Toward the uh, middle production, they actually stopped doing that for cost saving reasons. That center dash is ripped apart quite a bit. Even those power window switches are ripped out. I know this car needs a lot of work, but overall the interior is in halfway decent shape actually. The carpets seem to be retaining their shape. This side's looking a little worse. That seat doesn't appear to be even bolted in. The wiring looks to be everywhere. If I zoom in here, there's actually an additional gauge cluster in the glove box. That's been wired into the fuse panel. There's also a bunch of running wires which way. This is going to be a big headache. I know there's a lot of glare there, but there's an actual center clock, the Euro style. I'm really jealous, I wish I had that on my car. Well that does it for this walk around of this 1980 Porsche 928S Euro spec. 
I do appreciate the owner's willingness for me to take video of this and share it with you guys. This is certainly going to be an interesting project and I hope I can document some of the success along the way while he gets this car back on the road. Again, I'm going to try to do some troubleshooting for him and figure out what's going on and why this car is not cranking. I'll try to make a couple troubleshooting videos on it and hopefully we can get it running here soon. Thanks everyone. Take it easy.